Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Clash of the Correspondence. Except, James, this time there's no clash. My name's Serge. <laughs> My name's James. And we have with us at FPL Canal Neil on the line uh, to talk to us about stats. Neil, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, can't complain at all. Can't complain at all. Um, the international break is actually quite nice because uh, I had a couple of days off because the kids start school, so I thought I'd take two days off before they start school and didn't have to waste those two days thinking about FPL. There is literally nothing nice about this. I don't know what you're talking about. I needed it for two days, I'll be honest with you. The only the only benefit is my, my son is actually getting some of my attention at the moment. <laughs> but he has been all, all of August anyway because there's no there's not really any midweek matches. Once the Champions League starts up again and that, I mean, I don't know. There's probably a little bit of neglect going on in the household. Mm. Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> Just how, saying. How do you feel about your start to the FPL season, Neil? You're, you're on 243 points, top half a million. Yeah, not too not too bad. Six, 60 point average, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, uh, why wouldn't not, you? Yeah. Nothing to complain about at the moment. Now, what are you about five hundred k, Neil? So, Four fifty nine. Yeah, about five. Yeah, just under five hundred k. Wow. So, have, you, have you been having not, not amazing? Not an amazing start, but I'll. Uh, I'm not going to complain about it. Have you been having green arrows since game week one? Um, no, no. <laughs> no I started remember, off. Started off. You had a horrendous started off pretty well. last twelve weeks or so last season, didn't you? You had an unbelievable yeah. rank. I think you had about 12 of 13 red arrows and still finished about 25k, I think. Yeah, about 30k, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's, it's interesting. You So not not as good as last year, but... You're you're 10 points ahead of me at the moment, which equates to 500,000 places, which is mental, isn't it? So if you imagine yeah, you were just 10 so points tight. better off, you'd probably be top 100k at this point in time. So it's still very, very tight up at the top in terms of uh, your rank can move up and down so much. I noticed, Neil, there's, yeah. there's a big, big at the back five in your FPL team, mate. Yeah, I'm still still quite happy with that. Um, ideally, now Laporte's injured, I'd like to get De Bruyne in, but I'm not without wild carding. I don't think I could do it, so I'm I'm not. I'd like. He, obviously, he's the main player that most people want at the moment, isn't he? Um, and his ownership's mm, going up and up, off. and his price is going up and up. So it it feels like uh, there's not enough. I'd want to change my team to wild card, but. If I want to get De Bruyne, I'll have to wildcard. Well, who would be your, your obvious replacement you got in mind for Laporte, just out of interest? Otamendi. Yeah, just straight in, simple as that. Just Yeah, just stay stay on yeah, the same. Well, when we did the people's double. poll on, on Monday, that, that, that was generally our conclusion, wasn't it? Yeah, and there was quite a few people on Twitter that tweeted afterwards and just said, yeah, I filled it with Otamendi, it's a sideways move. Um, our, our Man City yeah. correspondent, Pring, Johnny uh, Pringle, FPL Pringle, said that he would say that that was the obvious move, but wait and see what's happened with Laporte. Well, we know now, don't we, that he's had surgery, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be next no, week. He's, yeah, no, he's very unlikely to play this no, calendar year. It's going to be a while. So, yeah. yeah, maybe Christmas time if you're lucky. I think. Yeah, uh, Neil, so, we've obviously got you on to so, talk some numbers. Is there anything yep. specifically that you wanted to sort of bring to the table here on this? Well, so I've looked at the um, expected. Attacking returns. Um, did an article on it at the start of the season. Yeah. Um, looking at it from last year, I've done the same for the first four game weeks. Um, obviously, it's still far too early to be drawing too many conclusions from it, but it's interesting to look at how how players are performing and whether some of the more popular players are actually got the numbers to back it up. So. One of one of the main ones, I suppose, would be um, Sidge's Sabios. Sub, is it Danny Sabios? Yes. So, so he's he's one hundred and sixty fourth for expected attacking points this year. Fucking hell, Neil! Did wow. you actually count joint, that far down? <laughs> Excel will do joint, it for you. Joint, joint with Lewis Dunk. Wow. So, so, so I think maybe that one point one million or whatever it is you've got in the bank could could be spent on upgrading him. 
Yeah, I don't. I mean, looking at the eye test though on Sabios, he's he that's that comes out that I would have said is an anomaly, surely. I, I would I would throw into the conversation on Sabios and, and say in a little bit of defence of Sudia, he's started two games and one of them was away to Liverpool, so I don't think that's too surprising. No, true, but Theo Walcott's higher up the list with played 30 min- 39 minutes or something this year. OK, actually, that's a problem, so you should yeah. say <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, if you can get ranked off playing 39 minutes out of four games, then obviously this is where stats can be misleading or a little bit of an issue because they, they don't take into account all of the considerations in there. Um, just looking at the way that Arsenal yeah. were different when Tobias came on, surely he's going to start now moving forward. Plus, you've got to factor in uh, the price. Yeah. Uh, he is he what we started the season at five point five, which puts him in that enabler bracket. You've got a top six attacking midfielder at less than six million, and I've had two price rises out of him. There, there are. It's not just about obviously what the stats throw up, right? Yeah, I, no, I no, yeah, yeah, definitely. And only four games in, you can't you can't draw too many conclusions. But I just thought it was interesting that he was quite so low. Yeah, for sure. Um, who's standing out there for 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 XG individually, uh, Neil? So, so Sterling's top. Um, no surprise. So, there. so yeah, um, just ahead of De Bruyne and ahead of Salah. Is that XG That's and XA three. or just XG? Neil? Yes. So this is this is um, converting the XG to positional points for goals. So a midfielder gets their XG times by five. Striker gets their XG Oh, I see. Times so your X, XFPL in it, basically. You're putting the FPL yeah, points yeah. on top of that. I understand. And then yep. adding on adding on the XA times three. Gotcha. So, that makes yeah, sense. To translate it to X, FPL. So, so yeah, it's at, Sterling. Uh, De... Go on, Neil. Sorry. Sorry, Sterling, De Bruyne and Salah, top three. Yeah, it's no surprise. Do you think then, with obviously De Bruyne coming in at a, a far lower value than the other two guys, does that make him, I hate the word, essential? <laughs> That's... I don't own him, and I'm not 100% sure I'm looking to get him in, so it's hard for me to call him yeah, essential. No, mm. It's not going to be but, for everyone. But yeah, he's he's probably as close to essential as anyone. I think if Kevin De Bruyne tears it up against Norwich Surge in game week five, we're not going to speak about him on the pod anymore. Yeah, it's done and dusted, right? He's the player I'm most worried about not owning. What, more than uh, some of the other sort of premiums that you have? Or don't have, rather? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So you'd be yeah. more... Who have you got? I've, who have you I've, got? Neil, I've got, the premium? I've got Salah and Sterling. I've got Salah and Sterling. So you're saying you'd be more worried about De Bruyne than, say, a Kane or Aubameyang, for example? Or Aguero. Yeah, um, Aguero. Kane, Kane and Aubameyang have been, in terms of XFPL, which is I've looked at, like Haller, Puki, Barnes are all above Kane and Aubameyang for expected returns. I've I've taken the view with Kevin De Bruyne so, that he's, he was, at 9.5, he was ridiculous value. At 9.8, he's still good value. At 10, he's still yeah. going to be good value. So... I don't feel like I'm ever going to miss the value boat with him, even if he went up to 10.1 or 10.2. And I'm also in the same boat as you, Neil, in the sense that I can't get him without wildcarding because I'd need to make two or three changes um, and I don't want to play yeah. the wildcard. So I'm going to ride out maybe two more game weeks, build up two transfers again, and then maybe do something similar to what James did, take a minus four to get Kevin De Bruyne in, which will be in two to three weeks. Uh, he's at 9.8 now. I I don't think he'd got more than 10.1, 10.2. Two things I'd add. Two things I'd add on your plan there, Serge. The next two games: are Norwich away and Watford at home. <laughs> They're gonna smash them both, aren't they? Right. Well, this is why I made the decision to to get it done ahead of Brighton at home. Sure. Just get it done. Um, I want to throw in two stats briefly on on Kevin De Bruyne because we could spend hours talking about him, and I think the listeners are really sick of it. Um, most key passes this season with 16. 16 in four games, most key passes. He's also created six big chances. That's double anybody else in the league. Let's talk about someone else, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about someone else yeah. on the list um, that you that for, in terms of stats, um, who I'm interested in your take on 
um, because I've just put him in my team in terms of James Madison. He's only had two assists this season, but he's taken the most corners um, in terms of 23 corners, three more than anyone else. And through balls was an interesting one because obviously the strike striker up front, up on, up top there, Jamie Vardy, lives off through balls, running on at pace, getting in behind people. And he's played five through balls so, so far. Um, how does how, What are your thoughts on James Madison? How does he rank? Yeah, he's rank, he's ranked 28th out of all players. Um, he's above Vardy. So, yeah. That's he's interesting. Best. You made me best feel a Lester bit better asset. about myself there. <laughs> Probably, Vardy. but... Uh, Madison, sorry. But um, I think any of him, Vardy or Tielemans, look, look pretty good. Pretty good shouts from Leicester. Um, what, what definitely. A, what, a, what about while, while team. we're on them, Leicester? Defensively, uh, their expected clean sheets. I noticed. I, I think it, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, Neil. I think it's the best in the league at the moment in terms of expected. Do you know if that's correct? Yeah. So I think on Opta, it, on on Opta, it's best, and then on Understat, I think they're they're second or third. Um, I think Sheffield United are best, maybe wow. on. Understand. I saw Sheffield United were quite high yeah. up. Yeah. Do you know how they? Um, yeah. Because obviously some people will use like Opta, some will use like Understat. Do you know how they measure that differently? Or is it just the opinion essentially? Yeah. So the models are just different in terms of. I think Opta. Yeah. There's there's probably better people to talk about it than me to be honest, but. Um. Yeah, the models are just slightly different in the way that they evaluate the the chances yeah because um, I, I get my data from will's uh, fancy football hub and i think he uses yeah. opta i think yeah i'm pretty sure yeah they, his they is opta, opta yeah opta. yeah i've 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 got that too um but i use understat as well um yeah they're they're slightly different but not not too different that it's too much of an issue Okay. I mean, is there anyone in in the Leicester team at the moment that's standing out? Sionki is obviously getting a a lot of mentions. Um, he's four point five. Might even got up to four point six now. I'm not sure. Um, are you considering someone? Have you considered someone like that as say a Laporte replacement, Neil? Yeah, yeah. Considered coming off Laporte and going down and saving that. The two million there would nearly get me Martial to De Bruyne. So it. Yeah, it's a consideration, yeah. <laughs> and they've they've obviously uh, done that, that pr- sounds a good move pretty well defensively. I think the off putter with with that, I mean, Leicester's XG is good, and you have to obviously consider. With, I, I've got a point on it, but obviously, three of the next four, as we've said, United, Spurs, Liverpool, doesn't really feel the right time to be throwing Sionku into your yeah. team. Yeah, I think no. the attacking guys is right. No, it doesn't. And no. just to kind of add to the fact yeah, that Leicester definitely not. Um, expected clean sheets according to Opta is the highest so far. Obviously played Wolves in game week one who will sit behind the ball. Mm-hmm. Game week two, they completely dominated at Chelsea after a kind of shaky first half. There weren't too many chances in game week three against Sheffield United. And Bournemouth at home, they're a bit hit and miss, aren't they? Mm. So actually on those yeah, four fixtures, yeah. it's probably not a huge surprise that Leicester do come up that highly. Um, and to be seen, I think, no. By the time they hit the next international break, that they're still in that sort of position. Yeah, one one that was surprising for me on the other side, attacking wise, is our uh, West Ham. They're they're high up on XG as a team, um, and like you think they've played City already as well. So that's pretty impressive. It's interesting you mentioned that Neil because uh, was it last uh, earlier this week or last week James and I were driving home and we mentioned that we were just talking about it West Ham had a higher it was more than three against Watford and more than three against um, Norwich as our XG for the last two games to be above three for two games in a row is pretty rare. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, you don't you don't see that very often. You might argue argue without trying to upset Mark and Stephen, our correspondents here too much, you might have just played the two weakest sides defensively in the league. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but obviously, it's the quality of the chances as well, right? I think, I mean, the Norwich one, we probably should have scored three or four, so that's fair. And um, against Watford, we did score three. So the XG wasn't actually that far off being being reasonably um, accurate. 
Another one that I wanted to, to talk to you about, which is going to be in a few people's minds, is the that £11 million striker, um, Harry Kane versus Aubameyang. Both have scored three goals so far this season. Aubameyang's three points ahead because of the one assist that he's picked up and pipped, but BPS-wise, they're bang on. Um, I was looking at a game week six move from, in between five and six, move from Harry Kane to Aubameyang to catch about eight to 10 really good fixtures for Arsenal. And I didn't really think that Spurs were firing um, as well as they could. But then obviously now the European transfer windows closed. Ericsson's staying. Are they going to now be a little bit more settled? Um, Is there anything in the stats that differentiate one over the other? Or is it literally a case of toss a coin and hold your breath? Yeah. Yeah. Toss a coin. They're both pretty much identical. Both next next to each other in terms of uh strikers for xfpl harry kane mm. s- slightly ahead but le- less than half a point so nothing between them really it's interesting i was looking back on Aubameyang that his first half of last season in terms of fpl points was a lot stronger than his second yeah and i think one of yeah. the reasons yeah. for that was was obviously he wasn't used too much in europa group yep. stage Whereas in the second half of the season, their, their priorities kind of merged into in between the two. And there's no real reason. I, yeah. I think there's a fear, obviously, in terms of whether you want to look at Aubameyang or Lacazette or Pepe, that, that these guys will be getting used in Europa and there'll be rotation in the in the Premier League. I think, you know, they've got Eintracht Frankfurt, who got to the semi-final last year in the Europa League, but have essentially had their front three completely dismantled, so as not as strong as they were last year. And otherwise, they should they should piss through the group with no need to use these guys, really. And there are guys in the background, like Reese Nelson, who are going to need football. Ozil's another one, right? Ozil's ideal for the Europa, isn't he? Yeah. Stick him in mm. that, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah. yeah. So I don't, think, I don't think rotation is too much for concern. They've obviously got a great run of fixtures, Arsenal, which starts now. Um, the only f- argument I'd throw back against that, other than those who think that Harry Kane plays centre-half, is that, that Spurs also have decent fixtures over the next few games. I, I agree with you on that. That's why it's a case of literally, if you've got one, toss a coin, hold your breath, and you're, you're, you're going to be not... Uh, it would surprise me yeah. if their points returns over the next five to seven games are more than four or five points apart. I think they're going to be there or thereabouts between the two of them. Unless one of them goes crazy in any particular game and bangs in a hat trick, um, it's going to be very, very close. Which which they're both capable of on their day. Yeah, exactly. Fairness. So just wanted to pull up Spurs' fixtures for the next up till Liverpool in game week 10. Palace at home, Leicester away, Southampton at home, Brighton away, Watford at home. You go, oh, Leicester away is difficult. It's got more goals against Leicester than any other club. Mm. So... Look at them fire. I can't take him out. No. <laughs> Stick him with it. Yeah, sure. Um, Neil, the big at the back has been a big debate, especially because obviously we had to wait till game <laughs> four for the first Liverpool clean sheet. Um, you've got two Liverpool defenders and two City defenders, same as James. I've got uh, two, three Liverpool defenders and two City defensively. Uh, you went with Robertson over Trent. Uh, Two, yeah, two things that. there. Is that a regret? Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll move that out yeah. of the way. Um, and you're sticking with it. Like statistically, there's nothing that makes you think, you know what, let me come off. Because we've been sticking with it for as long the- as we can and we've got no intention of coming off as well. No, I've got no intention of coming off the defence at the moment. Um, I, w- I would like to be able to swap Roberts into Alexander-Arnold um, just because the stats, Alexander-Arnold's, way ahead of Robertson at the moment um, but whether that's a transfer I can afford to make is unlikely at the moment with Laporte injured you want to save your pennies for um, trying to get De Bruyne in as well right so yeah I every don't, little point I, yeah, one I feel like Neil's that. come on and he's like I'm not in a rush to get De Bruyne we threw some stats out and he's like oh yeah I might make that move <laughs> Trent Alexander-Arnold so far this season 41 crosses Seven more than anybody else in the league. That's on average is more than ten a game, right? Wow, yeah. This guy's playing I mean, right back. Yeah. He's taking the free kicks as well. It's three um, assists in four games. <laughs> yeah. And it, that's a continuation of yeah. an amazing spell we had on the back end of, of last season. Yeah. Klopp did suggest before the Burnley game that there would yeah. be no rotation in the Burnley game 
and then coming out the other side, there would be. Um, however, again, I feel like they've obviously got a, a difficult Champions League tie with Napoli coming up, but they should still relatively comfortably be able to breeze through this group. So I'm not yeah. overly concerned about it. Same no, with, I don't, same I don't think they can well. afford to rotate. Like, they need to get every point they can to keep up with City, so... I don't think they can afford to rotate. Well, yeah, I think it makes more sense to rotate in the Champions League, doesn't it? For them specifically. Yeah, because you can drop points in the Champions League and they can still get through. Oh, if yeah, they I drop mean, points in the league, can, that, that could be it. He, he, uh, take the Champions League group, for example. If they win three, draw one and lose two, they'll, they'll almost definitely still go through, won't they? If they have six league yeah, games exactly. in a row winning three, then they might be out of the title race. Yeah. That's the point, right? Yeah. So, yeah. no, you can't. I mean, yeah, what did, exactly. What did, uh, last year, we won six Champions League games to get to the final. Yeah. You don't have to that's show the, the consistency the that, of, um, that you, you need yeah. in the league. Like, you can't be winning half your league games. If you win half your league games, you ain't even going to get in the top four, as much as we're all falling over each other not <laughs> to get in it yeah. again. Um, but if you win 19 league games, you're going to struggle to finish top four. You need to be in excess of 20, really, at least. Um so no, I think, uh, and the same applies to City as well. Like I would see like Azus getting runs out in the Champions League. I'd see like if Sterling was going to get rested. Generally, that's where it would be. I think for for, for yeah. both of them, I don't see how either of them can believe. I think you know if Pep went to Norwich for whatever reason, left Sterling and Aguero out, and they didn't win, he would massively regret it. Um, I think it's more in a yeah, position definitely. win the game, take them off, um, and I think. There's certain games like that for City as well. City are already ahead on goal difference. Yep. Despite being uh, two points behind Liverpool. I mean, there's, a cup, there's, a, there's a run of fixtures now where they can ramp that up on Liverpool massively and mm -hmm. put themselves sort of 15, 20 goals ahead, I would say. Because Liverpool... Well, Liverpool got a tough run of fixtures, right? They really do, yeah. Whereas City's each week could be anything. Could be scrappy, but they could be four or fives every week. There aren't too many yeah. for Liverpool, other than you would look at maybe game week five. But you know Newcastle are going to go there and sit in and don't often get battered yeah. in these games. So I, I think City can really ramp up the goal difference pressure over the, between now and the next international break. Yeah. Manchester City have a, a much stronger psychological kind of... Um, they beat you in your head a bit easier than Liverpool do, in my opinion. When City score one, I feel like people are just like, oh, fuck this. I can't be asked anymore. Liverpool, if you go one down, you still kind of hang in a little bit. When City score one, they very quickly end up two or three up and then it's just game over. They have that ability to just, yeah, don't bother. Don't mess with us. Mm. Uh, just one more on Liverpool just before we come off them. Firmino. Hardy had a mention for us during the pauses. I, am I right in saying, Neil, most shots in the first four game weeks? Yeah. That's really yeah, surprising. and he's he's right up there with um with the ex, ex FPL as well. He's fifth for strikers. Yeah, I've seen a few people beginning to look at sort of drafting him in. Um, and I can understand why, because it just allows a little bit of budget movements elsewhere, doesn't it? I mean, four attacking returns, yeah. two, two assists, two goals in four games. You'd be happy with that. At nine and a half million. Yeah, that'll do. Like, yeah, if he's... you're returning three out of four, yeah, all day. Mm. Um, I don't know if necessarily that's sustainable over a whole season for Firmino. No, he's certainly capable. I don't, don't, don't think you'd be confident enough to captain him is the problem. The, yeah, you're absolutely spot on, Neil. I mean, one of the things I keep saying about Liverpool, other than the game week five fixture with Newcastle, is I don't think there are too many... That, well, there certainly aren't any others, in my opinion, between now and the next international break, where you'd go Salah and Mane would be priority to captain. And the same would obviously apply yeah. to Firmino. Uh, it's one of the reasons I'm not desperate to get either Salah, Mane, or I think we have to start including Firmino in the conversation now. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. What do you think of uh, Pookie, Neil? I, he's... I've I've got him. Um, I think we all have, <laughs> but I'd I'd I'd, I'd rather have Barnes um, mm. for the upcoming fixtures. I think I Pookie Pookie's numbers are good. Like he's he's providing value, and yeah, I I don't think he'll keep it up. 
that he may he may do, but I'd. I don't the way suppose Barnes he's is playing it up often without haircut, mate. To be honest with you, <laughs> um, Barnes Barnes just looks looks threatening every game. Yeah, and with I the mean, fixtures Burnley have got coming up, it's a move I'm beginning to consider as well. I'm thinking, oh, do, I, do you take Pookie through the City game, and then if the value starts yeah. dropping, do you start panicking? And let's be honest, a return against City is unlikely. It's not impossible. Yeah, and he could if Norwich will, yep. if Norwich return, he's the most likely. We know that he's gonna be their yeah. talisman. Yeah, scored away at Liverpool. But you look at it straight away and go Burnley's next four and go Brighton away, Norwich at home, Villa away, Everton at home, and maybe yeah. maybe we, some of us should take the the opinion that all right, let's take the little bit of the value on Pookie. This looks like the, yeah. the immediate and return, and I talk so much so often about that regret of holding someone too long because of the value you have in them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Have you got anything else specific, Neil, that you wanted to briefly touch on before we wrap up, mate? Just, just that um, Dina and Coleman. There's the difference between the two. Coleman is fourth for defenders for XFPL. Coleman's fourth, which surprised and me. Dean, Coleman's fourth. Um, Dean is nineteenth. Oh. Do you, do you think... Which was surprising. I, no, that's fair. Do you think... Is it considered into... When, when they're working out these models, do they consider things yep. like, for example, if you take Richarlison's winning goal against Wolves on Sunday, do they consider the fact that yep. there's not many people in the league that can cross a ball like that from that position? Would that get factored in or would they go... As, as, no, as the, that wouldn't get, wouldn't get factored that, in. That's part of the point, right? So actually... Yeah, on yeah, their models, yeah. you can't, it, you don't, they no, don't factor have, in things like you have ability. To make your own allowances. So, for yeah. example, if so someone's I'll... to to sort of break it down into simple terms, if if a team's got a penalty, does every single player have the same XG? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So but they, Dean's obviously they wouldn't. You'd take be more confident to... with Dean taking one than Coleman. Well, of course, but well, they'd part, get the same XG the for the so chance. You, you need to consider things yeah. like that. So if you take that on a on a penalty basis, like I'd argue Kane is one yep. of the best in the business at it. Whereas I think someone like Aguero yep. is not particularly a great penalty taker, but he'll have the same XG off that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which is, is yep. kind of fair, yep. but then that breaks down into into more things like the the position that Dean gets that cross in as an XA, that's nearly nothing. It's got to be, I would have thought. Whereas Coleman can't even put that ball in to that quality yeah. yeah so you have to be yeah. conscious of things like that there are always so you, yeah you have you have to look at the difference in quality yeah, between absolutely. the players absolutely so but it, it would just it just interested me that there was quite such a difference between the two when at the start of the season people were talking about saving that 0.5 and going with coleman well it's probably a they, di, di, coleman probably gets himself into actually more dangerous positions if you think like the pullback yeah he's for, got himself into more goal scoring position or better goal scoring positions yeah than i'm thinking like that has, the pullback for calvert lewin in, he, the, in the villa game yeah i think dean set him up with one in one of the games i think yeah palace game maybe yeah no you're right yeah there was yeah. one scrappy at the homestead end all right interesting yes well, look, Neil, we want to say thanks again for um, the the articles that you keep sending through, and um, for the for the community and for the website and what have you, and also joining us today. No, no problem. Neil, pleasure. I could have spoke to you for hours, mate. Loved that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, cool. Nice. Um, catch you again later. Thanks, awesome. mate. Don't Thank do you. what we've advised on the transfers. Do what's best for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. Always a I'll end up there. end up doing my wild card. Wild card now. Uh -huh. No, 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 don't do that. Don't no, do that. No, don't, no, do that. No. don't waste that. Yeah. <laughs> James, why don't you tell everyone what else we got left this week for their ears? There's only one more. Pleasure. There's only one more. Which is? Uh, late tomorrow night, we'll, we're doing a feature on uh, Berry Football Club. All you FPLers, there's plenty of uh, statistical nerdy stuff for you there. We're going to do something a little bit different tomorrow night. Yeah. The, the tragedy that is what's happening at Berry. Um, we'll have a, a look at the business side of things, the football side of things, and, and kind of what it means and will it happen again in the future because obviously football being a bigger and bigger business and people taking bigger and bigger bets you can you, you don't think this is the last time it's going to happen is it 
we can only Touch hope wood. not. But hopefully there might be some good news coming up for Berry, maybe. Yes. Cool. Um, so that's coming at you tomorrow. Thanks for, for listening. Do hit subscribe and like and all of those things um, that make James and I very happy. Other than that, thanks again, Neil, and ciao for now. Thanks, Neil. Q Music Man Child. <laughs> Fantasy Football Show.